For this video, I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks for when working with the perspective tool in Adobe Illustrator. Now, before we can begin working with this tool, it is actually not present on the Essentials toolbar. Now, you have a couple of options of how you can work with this. You could come down to edit the toolbar, and you could scroll through the options here till you found both the perspective grid tool and the perspective selection tool. And you can just click and drag to add it on to your toolbar. The other option, just so you're aware, if you'd like to get a little bit more comfortable regarding working with the grid, is remember you can come up to your top down, uh, drop down menu here. You could go to Essentials Classic, where then you would have the option regarding the perspective tool grid, and it would be with and grouped to the perspective selection tool. I'm going to go ahead and go back though, and I'm going to navigate back to Essentials since we did add that on here. Now, to begin, when you first select the tool, it's going to add an entire grid to your page here. Now, a couple of things to note when you are working with the grid here. Number one, notice up in the top here, you have this sub option kind of little icon here that you can click on all of the different options as far as your grids are concerned, where you have the horizontal grid being denoted by the green, you have the left grid being denoted by the blue, and then you have the right grid being denoted by orange here. Now, a thing to be aware of when you're working with the grid tool is that if you click away to work with other tools, the grid is going to stay there. To actually disable the grid and go back to being able to work with and see your artboard, up on this tool there is a little tiny corner here where if you hover over it, it's going to say hide grid. You click on that, you can then come back and start working with other shapes and objects you know, in your uh, environment here without the interference of the grid. But let's go ahead here. I'm going to leave this shape as is for right now, but let's go ahead and re-add that grid so we can take a look at it. Um, a little bit more on this is you should notice you have several points that you can click on and work with as far as the overall grid angles are concerned. So you can keep pushing out. You can also change as far as the height of your grid. So if you want to have it be a little bit shorter, you can even come down here to the bottom where all of the points meet and you can begin to work with the different axes as far as how do you want the overall design to look. So you've got a lot of different options whenever it comes to working with each of these individual elements here. And then you can actually position up or down to give a different layout here. Now, some things to point out, you do have a tool option property where you can set, really as far as your widget is concerned, this is going to let you change the location for your active. And then also tool, uh, you do have down here for the tool, you have the anchor point of perspective artwork and changing as far as your plane positioning, the intersection of the grids. We don't really work too much with that. We kind of get started as far as just coming in and changing as far as the overall grid is concerned here. And we kind of position it as such. So let me go ahead here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to start drawing something using your grids. Now, the first thing you're going to have to double check is your little widget up in the upper left hand corner to see which is your active grid. So I'm going to snap mine back to the left grid, to this blue grid right here. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to come back and I'm going to grab the star tool. Now you have a couple of ways of working with this. So if I go ahead and change this over to where I have a yellow fill for my star and I just come and hover over the grid, you see how the moment I begin drawing the star here, it snaps to that grid and gives me that perspective view. I can continue working this way even with my selection tool by clicking and dragging and repositioning the location on the grid. You can also use the perspective grid selection tool, which will actually help as far as scaling 
for how close or how far away something will look. Now, to show you another example here, let's say that I want to grab the spiral tool. Now what I'm going to do is kind of draw my spiral out and about here, and I'm going to change the stroke maybe to a brighter yellow, kind of make it a little bit thicker. But what I want to draw your attention to again is using this selection tool here. You see how even drawing all the way out in this gray area from the artboard, you're still keeping to that grid. That's because you have your active grid icon up here. Now, the next item I'd like to demonstrate to you is some type. So I'm going to go ahead here, I'm going to grab my type tool, and type's a little bit different. If you notice here, I've gone in, I'm making my types, so I'm going to call this grid text example here. But you notice as I'm working with it, it's staying flat. I can actually still come in and kind of reposition, stays flat. So what I'm going to do here though is I'm going to come in and grab that perspective selection tool again. Now this grid example text though, I want it to appear on my orange grid. So what I'm going to do is come up to my little icon, make sure that the right grid is active, and then using the perspective selection tool on my text, I'm going to click hold and begin to drag, and you see how immediately it snaps to your other grid there. Once you're done working with your grid, or if you want to hide it to add other elements, remember you just come up and you click on hide grid, and now you have some perspective going on in your design. I can now come in here and I could use other tools with the grid hidden at this point and kind of still draw on a flat format here. So this gives us the option here that we can work with these different tools or the perspective tools but kind of combined your perspectives here. So again that was an overview of your perspective grid tool and your perspective selection tool.